Welcome back, welcome back to the DAP Digest. I'm your host, Brady McKenna. Here to help you digest decentralized apps and the networks that are built on today, we have some interesting stuff. Something that was requested that I'm not sure why I didn't do a long time ago, but we're gonna look at some rare Pepe's. All things rare Pepe. Uh, if you are unfamiliar with, unfamiliar with Rare Pepe and really how NFTs started in general, we're going to do one heck of a deep dive today. Um, it's going to be pretty cool. I think you're all going to enjoy it quite a bit. If you're wondering why people are paying millions of dollars for pictures of monkeys and frogs, we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about what's actually going on, how this may be the next stage of memorabilia collectibles and maybe even the fact that rare pepe might be turning into the mickey mouse of the internet with even more prominence and influence what do you think let me know let me know in chat what do you think chat is that a fair take am i full of crap does that sound stupid does it sound insane i'd say all of the above but it doesn't make any of it any more or less valid. So let's dig in, shall we? Okay. Doctor says, full of crap. Full of crap, he says. He's probably right. I think the, the doctor has a fair assessment. Fair assessment indeed. Let me go ahead and see if I have my whole setup here. We're gonna have to do some weird stuff today to be able to do this tutorial, but we're gonna give it a try. We're gonna see what we can do, and hopefully it all works. This may not work. <laughs> As intended, anyway. We're gonna give it a try. Oh no, okay. Give me a few minutes to see if I can fix a couple things here. And we should be good. We got a little bit of news today too. I'm sure everyone knows that the world is in conflict right now. I've got a little bit to say about that. I've done a little bit of research. Some of you asked if we could do some Ukraine donations and whatnot instead of focusing on grants and Gitcoin. <clears throat> I think that's a fair assessment today. Uh, I did want to do some research for all of you to know what the legitimate sources for information on donating to Ukraine, if you would like to do that, where they are what to watch out for, what to be careful about. Um, there's a lot going on, so yeah. Yeah, Uno's still on the floor, Pill, I know. I am going pretty slow this week. There's a lot going on and I'm just like, not, um, Operating at 100% right now. Very distracted. A little upset this week too. But we're going to make sure I'm still on point. We're still being informative. We're still helping people level up. And we're even going to give you some proper information on <clears throat> donating if you'd like. Okay. Some of you know my feelings though, you heard me talk a little bit in uh, Discord this week, so you, I won't rant too much. You wanna know how I feel personally? It's the same thing I'm always saying, effing boomers.
If any of you want to follow along with what I'm setting up right now, what we're going to be looking at is actually free wallet, which is probably your best bet for what I'm doing. It's going to be a little bit biased on this rare Pepe tutorial, but if you are setting up a wallet and following along, uh, set up free wallet and you can follow along as well. Okay, uh, I think we have, yeah, I think we're good. So if you want to follow along though, I'm going to go ahead and drop the link here. It's just counter wallet, counterparty.io slash wallets. Uh, there's a few different wallets that you can use, uh, but this is the one we're going to be using today. And while I'm doing the news, uh, you can go ahead and set that up and get it ready if you'd like. It's pretty quick and easy and straightforward, it's like setting up any crypto wallet. Um, but yeah, we'll, uh, we'll get there in a moment. How is everyone doing today though? Is everyone hanging in there? So if you go there, those are the wallets that we'll be using today. Uh, Counter wallet is more of an online hosted wallet and it doesn't always work. It's the one everyone's probably familiar with. Book of Orbs is still active. It's the one that if you have played Spells of Genesis, who District Zero X actually has a playable card in the game, that was their wallet that they launched, which does the same thing. You can load up your <coughs> seed phrase and use it all the same. Casa was also launched um, by the same team, I believe, and it is, um, it's okay. It's more of a mobile focused version of Counterparty. Uh, counter tools, I'm actually not familiar with. Freeport was the first one that was ever done by the uh, original creator of Rare Pepe. And you can use Freeport if you would like. It's not too bad. It's a little limited, limiting. Indie Square is pretty good for mobile. I am not familiar with any of the other ones here. So that said, we're gonna be focused on Free Wallet because I feel like it's the best user experience. So while we're doing the news, go ahead and get Free Wallet set up if you would like. And, <clears throat> and we will go from there. So I'm actually setting up a virtual machine today so we can do this proper. Um, we're going to see how that work, works out. Doctor, you just had your teeth cleaned? Good. I'm supposed to go in and get that done myself. Okay. I think we're almost ready. I had some hiccups here. <clears throat> oh. Maybe this isn't going to work. I don't know. Let's see here. Okay, my virtual machine is not cooperating for some reason. We're gonna see. Hey Shesba, how are you?
so while you're waiting for me to tinker with this a little bit, you can, uh, if no one has done so yet. Oh, is this working? Oh, I think it's working. If you want to learn more about Rare Pepe and what it's all about and the history of it and really dig into what's going on, the movie Feels Good Man is actually a pretty good option. So I'm going to go ahead and link you. If you haven't seen it yet, that is the IMDB for Feels Good Man. It will teach you everything you need to know about Pepe, at least initially. Not necessarily rare Pepe's. We're going to do a bit more of a deep dive on the crypto side of things, of course, as usual. But yeah, should be very informative and help you meet Matt Fury, the original creator. Learn what a rare Pepe is a little bit. They kind of touch on it, but they mostly dig into the lore and history. So it's pretty good. Yeah, Doctor, I believe you did share it quite a while ago. It's definitely worth a watch. Hello, Kyle. How are you? Thanks for dropping in. Good to have you. Good to have you. All right. I think Free Wallet is set up. Excellent. Yeah, I think we're ready. I'm making sure I'm not screwing up here right now. So if it's taking me a little longer than usual to set up, please excuse because this is not easy doing crypto tutorials safely and securely while you're live streaming. You can screw up very easily. Before you hit that share screen button, you better have all your ducks in a row. That's one thing I know for a fact. Be sure you have your ducks in a row. Which is what I'm doing right now. Getting them ducks in a row. I can't, I'm not even good at dad jokes right now. Never do what I'm doing either. Don't set up wallets while you're live streaming. Unless you're prepared to lose it all. That's one thing about live streaming is you have to assume everything you're doing is doxxed, <coughs> stolen, ruined, and will forever be gone. One wrong click and it's all gone. Can't believe a whole week has gone by. Yeah, it's been uh, a little odd. Time has been a little odd. <coughs> I think we are squared away. We are going to have to actually get a little bit of Bitcoin in the wallet. We're going to do a few things, actually. We're going to uh, we're gonna need a little bit of Bitcoin. 
we're going to need to get some XCP so we can actually do stuff with Counterparty, which I might actually show you how to do that live. And you will also need some tokens for um, Emblem Vault, which is if you're kind of like how you wrap Bitcoin and put it on Ethereum, you're able to wrap Counterparty tokens like uh, Rare Pepe's and put them in on Ethereum and sell them on OpenSea. So we're going to show you some of that as well. Okay, hopefully I have everything set up and ready to go. We're gonna find out, aren't we? <clears throat> hmm. Well, I'm not entirely sure if this is gonna work, but this virtual machine is not cooperating. That's what I'm trying to do right now. Like I have a dev completely sandboxed development environment set up in Windows using their virtual machine system that they have, but it is Windows 11 and it is acting a little bit funny with Free Wallet. But I'm gonna give it one more try and see what we can do. That said, Free Wallet is a very easy wallet to set up you pretty much open it it gives you your seed phrase uh you go ahead and save that securely like you normally would and you're up and running you just grab your address send some bitcoin in there then you're gonna have to probably buy some xcp if you want to follow along with this completely but we may not be able to even get to some of this so we're gonna see what's possible and go from there Come on, free wallet, you can do it. I believe in you. <laughs> I don't know if it's cooperating or not. <clears throat> Ben, you said the virtual machine you wake up in every day doesn't cooperate either. <laughs> no kidding. Pill, you said you're semi working on a track. Simple, well, semi lurking and working on a track. Cool. Keep up the music. Keeps our brains occupied. I love music, it's very therapeutic. Okay, well, I don't know if the virtual machine thing is going to work, so I can't show you everything I wanted to show you, but... I don't think I gave my virtual machine enough resources to work properly. We'll see. Yeah, it's like resources are pegging out on the memory. Okay, well, I'm gonna let this kind of sit to the side and if it happens to load and start working, cool. If not, then I'm gonna try something different. All right, 
let's jump into the news. Let's look at the markets and see what's going on. Uh, let's get real. Here we go. Here's where I dox myself. <laughs> I'm already doxed. <laughs> um, yeah. We're good. Okay. Um, the markets are hanging in the balance here. DeFi still has quite a bit locked. Still looks good. No major swings, changes, or anything psycho. Uh, that's good. I like just to see it leveled out and chilling. It's uh, I'm not going to dig in too much. I mean, we could look at NFTs if we really want. NFTs are, well, in the toilet. <laughs> They're still moving somewhat. Like this chart is not representative of what's actually going in and going on in NFT land. But I mean, I mean, if it's in the toilet, obviously there's a lot of buying happening on the sidelines with people preparing to own all the punks. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what everyone's doing. Anyway, I don't want to harp on this too much. We're gonna just jump right into charts, blast through this. Uh, we are at a pretty... Hey, thank you so much for the Prime sub there, Snorky. I really appreciate it. Um, probably going to go ahead and donate any money today to some of the Ukraine resources that I saw <clears throat> that were verified to be proper donation addresses. I might do a little bit of donating uh, myself if any of you would like to do that or have issues with me doing that, depending on what's... I don't know. I don't know if you have issues with that. Um, I personally am going to be doing some of that. So, uh, yeah. Thank you for the donation. You couldn't imagine a better way for your Prime sub to be spent? Well, good. Um, that's what we'll do with it. Coma Dave. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I really appreciate the gifted sub there. Sopier, say thank you. <laughs> Pickles, thank you so much. Thank you so much for the bits. That's what we're going to use them for today, though. We're going to, well, use crypto for what it was meant to be used for. And in a pinch, when you don't have other options and things aren't working, crypto is there for you. And uh, I had my rant about that already. And crypto is proving to be very useful for a lot of people who are cut off from banking services right now. That's what most of the news is going to be about today, obviously. So we're bouncing off this line here. I'm not even going to draw the line because you can see very clearly that we're bouncing off this line pretty healthily, really. I mean, but I don't think the markets matter in terms of price right now, in my opinion. Like, if crypto is being used for its intended purpose and is actually out there in the world and like being used in times of crisis for people when they are cut off from banking services, it doesn't really matter what the price is because something is better than nothing in that situation. So why even worry about the price today? I don't really care. Is it bouncing? Is it falling? As usual, I don't really care. It's kind of like whatever. We're looking at ETH against Bitcoin bouncing right here, by the way. So that maybe matters more to me than anything else uh, but which is why i kind of started on it but let's look at what eth is doing relative to the us dollar which is kind of going to be a weird hairy situation i don't know i've kind of pulled all the stops i don't have any of my bars charts lines graphs none of that up right now because i'm just looking at the chart and i'm reading the world right now i'm not reading charts so i'm not even going to draw lines for anyone because i don't really care because crypto is accomplishing its mission in my opinion today it's there for people when they need it that's its mission that's why it exists that's why it's here in the world cool whatever bouncing around liquidity yada yada <laughs> whatever it's working and it's good enough let's move on uniswap builds an interface to swap altcoins into ETH donations for the Ukraine. Pretty cool of Uniswap to do this. Again, this is the technology there for people when they need it. You're able to donate super easily with whatever tokens you happen to have. So that's pretty convenient. That's pretty cool. 
Ukraine government is using crypto aid to purchase critical supplies, around $10 million in crypto donations sent to the Ukraine as of February 28th. This is obviously a lot more at this point. So it's interesting to see these numbers being thrown around. It's pr probably significantly bigger today. So this is a little out of date, um, but yeah, this was something that happened very quickly. Uh, pretty wild to watch, but um, US Treasury Department lists digital currencies as part of effort to, to sanction Russia's government. So they equated crypto transactions to deceptive or structured transactions or dealings in, attempt, in an attempt to evade US sanctions. Uh, that said, nothing, nothing like that has happened. If you actually dig into this article, it was a little bit misleading. Um, as usual, journalists are kind of just getting a snappy headline to grab you. But if you actually look into it and, and read it, they're talking about the fact that it has the potential to do so, not that it has been used as such. I think if any wartime money was starting to move around, we'd know it pretty quickly. And if it was moving to any sanctioned addresses, uh, we would probably know, know very, very quickly if crypto was involved in that. Instead, crypto has mostly been used to help support people in times of crisis when their bank accounts, debit cards, and other options are no, no longer working. So, yeah. That said, it's been interesting to see Binance, Kraken, B Binance and Kraken actually refuse the Ukrainian minister's request to freeze Russian accounts. And this is individual citizens themselves though they're saying it's like no we're not going to touch the citizen stuff but if you happen to see any wartime uh sanctioned movements of money yes so this is becoming a very contentious and strange situation even coinbase kind of jumped in and said coinbase will not institute a blanket ban on all transactions tied to russian crypto addresses everyone's taking a very granular approach uh it's pretty interesting to see it's been coinbase coinberry kucoin Binance, Kraken, all refusing to not sabotage ordinary Russian citizens' accounts, but targeting the military and government because, well, as we all know, we don't always agree with what our government is doing. And if you happen to be born in a certain country that declares war, uh, you might not agree with that. So it's becoming kind of an interesting dilemma for sanctions laws. It's usually a blanketed thing um, and a contentious thing, but it's interesting to see. Uh, but here we are watching crypto play out as we all knew it was going to. It was going to be complicated. It was going to be interesting. It was going to be crazy. It's going to be useful, but you want to know my deeper feelings, go ahead and jump into Discord and see my previous comment in general chat. That's how I really feel. <laughs> I don't have the energy today to even really talk about it too much but 18.6 million in crypto sent to ukraine um some of that was nft sales so as you can see there's a lot of money flowing around and this is you know it's a it's a politically neutral technology so yeah it could be used for whatever by whoever and the exchanges are taking a very granular approach to things so you're going to want to watch this as it develops very carefully this is fascinating to see but as i've always said one of the more interesting use cases for crypto for me is in times of war a lot of people say well the rules the history is written by the winners um yes this is true but we also have an immutable record of history now using blockchains uh and speaking of which decentralized data storage solution arweave is archiving documents from ukraine which is wonderful because if news or propaganda or edited things start turning up which is happens a lot during wartime uh those things can be archived and you can see a proof of changing the data uh arweave i'm i'm a pretty big fan of it i'm a big, big fan of ipfs arweave is a little more permanent so i'm a pretty big fan of it as well definitely go check it out watch what how this develops because this is the first major global like co conflict we have seen where we actually have a permanent record of history. That's never happened ever before. So this is a very healthy development, a very good thing. And I think it's gonna be very important in terms of the, you know, history is rewritten, is written by the winners. That's not necessarily the case anymore, is it? If we have a permanent, permanent record of history, then it's just a matter of curating and sorting through a lot of data.
We're going to have a lot of data to sort through, though. I've always been a big fan of this type of use case for crypto. And here it is, being used. <laughs> I don't want to dig into this too much. Um, I've been a little upset this week. I got friends, family, people who are all affected by everything that's going on right now. And uh, instead, I'm going to dig into a content request because that's, again, I want to stick to my primary goal um, of this stream is to be educational and informative and not just talk about a lot of the stuff that's bringing us all down and let's talk about the things that are actually bringing us up regardless of your opinions of nfts and pepe and crypto in general pepe is a very important part of crypto as a general concept it has been somewhat of a store of value for a lot of people people are using it and kind of like people use traditional artwork in uh, tumultuous times in history, uh, they are using crypto art as a way to store value. Maybe not necessarily stable stores of value, but what's interesting is Pepe's and NFTs, some of the more OG ones like this, tend to maintain their value as a very interesting store of value, almost better than Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies, which is really strange to see when you start looking at the charts of the prices of rare Pepe's and other NFTs some of the more OG ones, uh, they're pretty stable, almost scarily stable. Uh, so I'm actually a really big fan of it as a general concept because I love thinking outside of the box, smashing narratives and make forcing people to rethink their view of their worldview and NFTs and specifically rare Pepe's do that. They really take people and force them to rethink things in a very different worldview because it's not valid when you try to just have this blanket dogma view of crypto it doesn't really apply in some of these niche categories like rare pepe um regardless of how val valid it is people can people throw all the different things about how much they hate pepe and and it's used for this and it's used for that or it's like it's the alt-right movement or you know whatever you want to say that, about the negative sides of it but i mean if you've watched the movie feels good man that's not the case it really started with matt fury which is really just a a kid having fun uh <laughs> writing comics like like a lot of young kids do they just they're drawing they're writing comics and it's it's been pretty interesting to see it become almost the mickey mouse of the internet really i mean that's that's fascinating to see and if you want to learn more definitely watch feels good man because you'll you'll learn a lot of the different sides of it but it was done by matt fury which if you want to follow matt on twitter it's just matt underscore fury and he has his website linked there you can learn a little, a little bit more about his take on it but he has always wanted to save pepe and bring it back to something that you know feels good man <laughs> so yeah, anyway, without dig digging into that too much, uh, you can have your own take of Matt, uh, your own take of Pepe. We're going to dig into more of the crypto and almost the economic side of it and the technical side of it today. But to give you a little bit more about Matt, Matt was born in Columbus, Ohio, and he's currently in L.A. and he's, he's doing his thing as um, an accidental celebrity, I would say, which is... Kind of fun interesting and probably scary for a guy who just created a comic called boys club expecting it to just be this fun stupid little thing he did with his friends while they were probably burning one in their garage and now it's uh turning into something a little bigger than that and very contentious very political very uh wild to watch progress and it's not going away either regardless of your opinion the biggest innovation of crypto in general, and therefore also Pepe, is the fact that crypto doesn't care what your opinion is. It is a fact of life. That is the big innovation of crypto. It is a fact of life, and it will not change no matter what you think have to say. It's here to stay. Until something better is invented than crypto, but we'll have to see. Anyway, you want to go say hi to Matt, check him out, follow him. He's on Twitter. Um, rare 
hyphen Pepe. I'll go ahead and drop it in chat for all of you. That is a full collection you can dig into a lot. Of, th these are more of the uh, collection tools if you want to look at all the Pepes that there are. Uh, we're going to run through some of these. So these are like directories that show all the different Pepes that are out there. Uh, this is one. Another one that you can use is actually the Rare Pepe directory, which is a little cleaner and easier to read than some of the directories. Mind you, this does not have SSL security. Don't just instantly click on any link on the internet ever. Also, make a habit of copying and pasting your links and not clicking them, but be mindful that this does not have HTTPS. So, uh, that's just how it is today. There you go. Probably just gave my location away. There's also the dank directory, which there's multiple different Pepe's. There's fake rares, there's the original rares, there's the dank rares. And you, if you're getting into Pepe collecting, it's not a straightforward thing. And I'm not going to get into the curation side of things, the deeper side of Pepe and, and like what is danker than another one, what's more valuable than another one. Uh, there is some interesting economics behind them when you start looking at the rarity and the like what ones are actually popular and why. It's a little more nuanced, you know? There could be a political issue that makes one more rare. There could be a use case for an NFT. Yes, I'm gonna call them NFTs just for the hell of it. Shut up if you're listening and don't agree. <laughs> um, Use cases didn't just start with Ethereum and NFTs. It really started with Bitcoin. I mean, in fact, uh, Free Wallet, which you're going to install, they even have an NFT you can buy that uh, allows you to unlock extra fe features in Free Wallet. And while there's other options out there, and, re and you may not agree with pay paying for an NFT to unlock extra features. It is a form of patronage. It does support the developers and it does unlock the full marketplace features in the wallet. But we'll get to the that here in just a little bit. For now, here's these main directories here. We have the fake rares direct, fake rare directory dot wordpress dot com. Yes, you heard that right. If you want to look there it is a wordpress site but yeah it's actually this is where you get to actually check out the fake rare we're on the series zero excuse sharing that specific link you can actually dock that part off there and go to the full fake rares page and uh yeah it's definitely interesting these were a lot of these were more mu music focused in the recent ones but these are all the original rare pepe community members have started migrating over to fake rares and if you want to get more involved in what's happening now and not the more vintage pepes fake rares is a uh, pretty cool project to migrate over to and look at uh, the rare pepe finder is another directory if you want to look at that one where we can poke around here that has the original rare pepe series that each one you can really look at and and go through it's very clean it's very neat and this will give you a little more of a bird's eye view in my opinion so yep take a look dive in check it out uh if you want more of a coin market cap approach to pepe uh pepe.wtf is your best bet you can really look at the market just like you would expect on like OpenSea or, or it, well, you can't buy and sell directly on here, but they will link you. But there are some dangers to just buying Pepe's wrapped on OpenSea. We're going to dig into that, what you need to watch out for right after this. But just let's dig into the market a little bit and just just see. Let's, let's see what we have here. You can see the floor price, last sales, total supply, market cap top holders and the current supply of cards for sale uh, there's multiple ways to buy rare pepes like there's like kind of a almost smart contract vending machine type system on uh the the explorer directly and you can actually send bitcoin in and it will auto send the pepe or whatever card on counterparty 
uh, back out automatically like a vending machine. And that is probably the most efficient way to buy some of these so you don't have to deal with wrapped ones on Ethereum because most often the ones on Ethereum are trading at a premium because of the fact that it takes time to pay transactions on Bitcoin, to send it over to wrap it onto Ethereum and pay all the gas and then list it on OpenSea. And it's just, it's a big ordeal. So you'll likely pay a premium if you're over on if the Ethereum side, but there is a pretty big market on Ethereum that is slowly starting to blossom, but you are trusting a third party to hold custody in the technology that they have built, kind of like when you're wrapping Bitcoin. So you are trusting a third party, but um, I am a big fan of Emblem Vault. I like what they're doing and I do use it myself, but it is kind of a use at your own risk type, type thing because I don't know all the risks involved. Uh, so I don't go all in. I don't keep all my eggs in a basket. In this case, all my Pepe's in a basket. Uh, but yeah, um, let's look at the market a little bit. What do we have here? We have Gox Pepe. Gox Pepe is trading for 2.2 ETH right now. We have Pepe Nation, which is a little cheaper. This is more on the affordable side here. Let's kind of look at this one. It's It looks like it's harder to get a hold of, though. Got 6.2 ETH. Look at that. That's crazy. It's Dank Pepe. Let's look at Dank Pepe. I think this is the one we had a bit of a ripoff. Yeah, we had a ripoff one in Meme Factory. Someone took this one, they put it in Meme Factory, and lo and behold, it didn't get any sales. They, they didn't sell a single one. Um, they did animate it, which I thought was cool and innovative. But it's the interesting thing about provenance in crypto. You know, you can copy it. There might be a hundred derivatives of some Creative Commons project, but you don't have to buy them all. Not all of them sell, and the ones that do, you're really just being a patron of the original creator or community. So it's not necessarily, ooh, right click, saved, it's mine now. It's more about the provenance, patronage, and supporting the people who have actually created it. Speaking of which, when you are on pepe.wtf and you click on an asset, you can look at all the information you need to know about a rare Pepe. You can, of course, see the name, the series, the card number, total supply the artist issuance date everything you need to know it's it's pretty cool uh there's a lot of data on this website it is very much like the coin market cap of rare pepes you can even see charts so it's pretty convenient and x chain is kind of your go-to when you are looking at uh, any kind of counterparty assets. So they also link that to you uh, there's even a buy floor button that will take you directly to OpenSea. So let's look at what it looks like on OpenSea. So this is Emblem Vault, and you will notice that Emblem Vault, is that the wrong link? It just totally says the Mintable Collection. Okay, well, here's a great lesson. I think I actually have the wrong Emblem Vault link up right now. That can't be right. No, that's the correct one. Mintable Collection. Are they using Mintable on their back end? Is that what this is? Someone who knows a little bit more about Emblem Vault, please call me out on this one because apparently I'm not actually entirely sure here. I know how to find a proper one that is actually minted properly on Emblem Vault and we're gonna show you that right now, but I'm still actually a little bit confused on what ones are showing and, and why. So like, let's look here. Okay, these are probably the good ones. So if you click on one, here's how you find if there's a fake one, a fake, fake rare. Um, it will give you the link to Emblem Finance so you can actually see what's in the vault. Pickles, don't worry if you're a little confused. I'm going to show you, like, if you're looking at these, A, don't start collecting these on Ethereum because it's more of an advanced user type thing and there, you are paying a premium. And, you know, you should really be supporting the original vision of counterparty assets on Bitcoin anyway if you're interested in this. I'm not a big fan of trading them on, on Emblem Vault other than maybe getting some liquidity out of the Ethereum community for Rare Pepe's, but it's kind of antithetical to the whole idea of Rare Pepe in my opinion. So I have a lot of mixed feelings and emotions about it, but you know, you know what they say about opinions. They're like bungholes and everyone has one and they all stink. So 
take my opinions with a grain of salt, but I will show you how to find a real one and a fake one. So, if you click on the emblem vault link here, it's gonna take you to the actual vault where this is wrapped. But it looks like there's two different ones um, wrapped in here. Interesting, it didn't say that on the uh, vault. It totally doesn't say that on the vault, does it? No, it doesn't. Well, there's two things wrapped in here. And you can see there's the actual Dank Pepe and the Pepe Joint. Uh, which one is that? I don't even know what one that is. I'm not sure. Oh, I know what one that one is. Anyway, you're able to see if it's wrapped properly. If you don't see this or it says redeemed at the bottom, you'll know you actually have the wrong one. So let me show you what a wrong one looks like. These ones you can actually see, but it does store the metadata on IPFS, but that doesn't guarantee that it's a real one. You do need to actually go to Xchain and take a look. So here we go. Click here. We can see more of the details on Xchain about it. So yeah, it is the Pepe joint. Okay. <laughs> uh, so yeah, you can see all the data you need to see. You can see the dispensers and the dispensers are what I was saying. If you don't want to buy an open C, this is your other alternative is clicking directly to X chain, which is like ether scan for, for Bitcoin assets like Pepe's. And you can go see the actual way to buy it directly. So dispensers, of course, the information, you can see if the image is correct. You can see all the data. You can dest see destructions if any of them have been destroyed for any reason, which is a thing we'll talk about later. But you can see how much they are in Bitcoin terms. So click view and you will see a dispenser here. And obviously it says do not send funds to this dispenser. It will not give out any Pepe joints. Uh, that's because currently there is, it's, it's kind of shut off. It works like a... A vending machine that people can control and turn these on and off like a vending machine and currently this one is unavailable you need to actually click through all the dispensers until you find one that says it is available and here we go if you send 0 0.005 bitcoin to this address it will automatically like a vending machine spit out a pepe joint for you or whatever other asset you happen to be looking at this is how you buy them directly from dispensers and uh, this is probably the most efficient way to buy rare pepes. But if you happen to get into it a little deeper or there's something on wrapped on Ethereum in Emblem Vault that you can only get there and the price is right, definitely do that. But, you know, reach out to me and, and ask if you're unsure about something. I'm happy to help you with some of this because this is... This is kind of getting into the more advanced collector aspect of Rare Pepe's that, that it isn't for everyone. In fact, Rare Pepe's in general aren't for everyone. This is something that you really, if you're an OG and you've been playing with them for years and you have some original Pepe's, sure, you probably know those are real because you bought them on the original Rare Pepe website and that's, that's fine. Uh, but if you're really new to this and you're only used to Ethereum, be really careful don't dive in head first ask questions feel free to come ask me and there's even telegram channels that i will share here closer to the end of the stream for all of you to join uh the actual fake rares community some of the original uh pepe artists uh, are in some of these communities there's a lot of places you can join to ask questions learn get trolled and learn to love pepe <laughs> Pepe loves you, even if you don't love him. That's just, that's actually the way it works. Anyway, um, I know these are fake for a fact. These ones are fakes. So let's look at a fake one here. Okay, we got Banana Pepe here. Let's scroll down, view this NFT on Emblem Vault. Watch it, will say redeemed, I bet. Yep, or claimed, rather. Oh, no, I found a real one. Okay, well... If you find a real one, you can click on X chain, go check it out, and you can look at all the details, the dispensers, and you can find one that's for sale directly on Bitcoin if you want. You don't have to buy them on Emblem Vault. You, you don't. That said, you can look at the price difference, which that's actually seems a little unusual on the price there. Is that right? 0 0.005? 
I don't know. I'm not doing the math right now. Let me actually find a fake bake one though, so I, you can see what it looks like. So you know what not to buy. Probably Pepe Cash. Pepe Cash will be fake here. I think this one, I know this one is. Watch all of them are gonna be real when I'm trying to show you a fake. Yes, it is. Okay. Well, anyway, it will say claimed at the bottom and a lot of people are listing things that are not valid on here and I've seen some, some that haven't been valid. So you do need to be careful when you're buying. I've seen some people make some mistakes, but it looks like the majority of them are cleaned up. I think Emblem Vault does do some cleanup too and they're pretty careful about it. But uh, yeah, you're probably gonna see a lot of things other than Pepe's though on Emblem Vault. You can wrap anything like Twitter eggs, of course, rare Pepe's, Sarutobi Island, which was another original game on Bitcoin. That was an actual playable NFT game. Spells of Genesis, which all of you probably know because District Zero X has a card in Spells of Genesis. Bitcoins, Ether Rocks, Etheria, and Age of Chains. They're all in here. You can check them all out. And those are all um, OG NFTs. But like I said, I'm not really a big fan of that. I just, if you want to dive into it and just learn the mechanics of of Emblem Vault on a more of a sell side, I really recommend that. But it's it's a headache. You do need some of the Circuits of Value token to be able to wrap things. And Emblem Vault is done by Circuits of Value for anyone who's familiar with that project. Uh, and you do need their token to be able to wrap them. Uh, I don't know if there's a lot of liquidity for the token these days. Uh, you'll have to poke around and look. But you do need, obviously, Bitcoin to send it into the vault. You do need a little bit of Ethereum to pay for your Ethereum transactions. You, If you're wrapping, you do need the circuits of value token and you do need the ETH to actually list and, and buy and sell and trade on OpenSea too. So as you can see, there's a lot of overhead involved with mixing it onto the Ethereum network. So when there's more abilities to borrow against NFTs, I think that's more of an exciting use case for wrapping Pepe's onto Ethereum. So don't get into the whole speculating and buying and all this nonsense uh, with Pepe's. If you're gonna get into Pepe's, get into it to collect and have a piece of history and not necessarily getting into it to try and speculate and make short-term gains because you're, you're gonna get wrecked. You really will. I'm just warning you now. Uh, dig into it and learn and collect some Pepe's to really have that piece of history. And if you end up getting to borrow against these assets on Ethereum, then that might be a better use case of Emblem Vault because then you could leverage up your money and borrow against your assets. That's, that's amazing. Imagine borrowing against a digital frog. I mean, just saying those words out loud seems absurd, but the fact that we can do it is kind of like, it shows you how far we've actually come with crypto or how far we haven't come. I don't know. <laughs> Does Emblem Vault have a blue tick on OpenSea, you asked? Uh, doesn't look like it. No. I have a lot of mixed feelings about Emblem Vault. I really love what they're doing because it is just like wrapped Bitcoin, but for, for Pepe's and stuff. But I do have some mixed feelings. The user experience is terrible, I will admit. I have wrapped some things on Emblem Vault just to see how it works. And uh, I was going to go through it with you today, but I couldn't quite get my virtual machine working and I couldn't get the tokens moved around. It just it, because it's a pain in the butt and I don't think I could do it safely and securely while streaming. So I'm not gonna do it. All I'm going to say is if you like experimenting with things, it's pretty cool, but do it I wouldn't do it with some rare Pepe's. I would do it with some like more lower value tokens. Like there's some really cheap Spells of Genesis cards and um, I think some others. You'll have to poke around and see what's out there. I say really cheap. They're like $100. Okay, Brady. <laughs> really cheap, huh? Um, really cheap for a Pepe or freaking NFT. Anyway, when you... 
are going to go buy though, I really recommend buying on X chain. If you want to start learning to borrow against your NFTs on Ethereum, that's when you would actually play around with Emblem Vault. But this is all a pretty deep dive and I'm not gonna go too much further into this. I think some of the more interesting things will be uh, digging into some of the more other tools and stuff. So, oh yeah, no fat Pepe I think is, uh, this one should be real. I was actually going to go buy this one. <laughs> I was like, this is the one. I need this one. And FYI, I don't own as many rare Peppas as I wish I had. I actually, I had a wallet that had some rare Peppas in it and I, I can't access it anymore. And I kind of like walked away from Pepe for a long time out of just sadness because I think it was, it was probably one of my biggest screw ups was just seeing some of my Pepe is just gone because I didn't think, I thought they were just silly. I was just playing with them and collecting them and some of them are gone. And that's the other thing about playing with Emblem Vault and different wallets and Bitcoin and Ethereum and you're sending between two chains. Like there's a chance that you could lose these things. And this is definitely, I was going to do a full blown tutorial of some of this today, but I think it, the scope of doing that is like, holy crap, we'll pay, you know, use some of your Tide tokens and pay for a one-on-one -on -one meeting with me and I'll really do a deep dive with you. But I don't think I can do it live on stream with you. Um, but we can look at Free Wallet. We can look at what it takes to mint your own Pepe's. If any of you are artists, I would actually encourage you to start getting into minting your own Pepe's. I think as an artist, it would be very beneficial for you to dig into the community. They're very supportive. They're very trolly, but in a great way and I think I think it would be good for you. No fat Pepe is an oxymoron. <laughs> ben, they uh, held your message there. I cleared it for you. <laughs> I think it's because you said no fap. I think they just held it. They were like, nope, you're not allowed to say fap on Twitch. Ah, it's kind of weird. I do have the stream set up as 18 and older for a reason though, so. <laughs> okay, uh, what's next? Um, so, like I was saying about Matt, fap, 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 yes, it was the word fap, that's the one. <laughs> They're holding it, that's funny. Um, you can look at Matt Fury's actual Pepe collection that he did and it's pretty cool i encourage you to look at it it's rarepepes.fun and those are from matt fury himself he does also have his website mattfury.com if you want to look at some of the original artwork that he did uh you can see where the pepe aesthetic really blossomed from but i mean his artwork isn't just you know poorly drawn frogs he has this really interesting style that i think people don't realize when they're first getting into Pepe, they just see Pepe the frog and that's that's all they think. And they're like, oh, I'm so sick of hearing about Pepe, Pepe, Pepe. And they just ignore it. And they haven't really looked at Matt, the history, the lore. It's pretty fascinating looking at it. I mean, it's very weird, but I mean, the guy clearly put a lot of work into his art and uh, to see it get stolen by people was uh, probably infuriating for him. Sorry, that was bad. Sorry, Matt, if you're watching this, I'm really sorry. Uh, Matt did do uh, an NFT called Pegs. A lot of you probably have seen um, social media influencers using them as their avatars on Twitter and stuff. But uh, And you can see that they sold for quite a bit of ETH. I was really excited to see this because this is the patronage side of crypto that I love. Like, yeah, you could copy Pegs. Yeah, you can copy Pepe. But Matt himself raised ETH almost like Kickstarter or Patreon and did his own project like this and did really well. And people supported him because it was him, because it was Matt, because it was the original creator of the Mickey Mouse of the internet. And that's that's huge. And when I say NFTs are all about patronage, this is what I'm talking about. And this really shows you like what I'm talking about. People say, well, why is it selling for 35 ETH? That's freaking stupid. And it's like, because it's Matt. 
because it's actually Matt doing it. And why why are um, people buying music NFTs for like 20, 30 ETH? Why are people buying this, that, this, that? Yeah, the 10K PFP collections, I can understand where people are like, oh, that's all money laundering. That's all this, that's all that. But when you really bring crypto back to the whole peer-to-peer -peer aspect of money, that's what it's really about. It's about supporting people. It's about building social safety nets. It's about patronage. It's about token controlled access. It's a, I mean, that's, if you really boil everything down, all of crypto is token controlled access. You need a Bitcoin to access the network. These NFTs, if you bought one, I'm sure Matt would probably pick up the phone for you. You know, that's, you're paying, buying an NFT kind of, because you're, you have an expectation of a relationship with the creator just like you do on Patreon. And if someone isn't fulfilling that whole side of crypto as an NFT creator, A, in my opinion, they're failing. B, it doesn't need to be pegged to the value of access either. It's just a cool perk. It's like, if I buy something for 10 ETH, I would kind of expect you to pick up the phone for me if I was like, hey, uh, I supported you. Will you pick up the phone? Yeah, sure. But I don't know. It's interesting that uh, there's a lot of strange aspects of crypto that are kind of gross, but when you look at Matt and Pegs and Rare Pepe and you bring it back to something very grounding like this, it, it makes a lot more sense, right? You know? Hey Green, hey Green, thank you so much for the uh, 12 month sub. You're at one year, and we are going to be donating um, subs today to Ukraine. And towards the end of the stream here, we're going to give uh, a little more info on um, proper links for donating to Ukraine. Uh, there was a lot of misinformation and and give and take on on what was actually legitimate. Uh, but just to let you know, um, if you don't want to donate to Ukraine let me know uh, if you do want it to go to Gitcoin Grants. Still, I'm happy to keep a degree of separation there if people want to continue donating to grants and not Ukraine. Um, just reach out and let me know, but we are going to be doing that today. Um, not on stream. Um, I just don't have the wherewithal and energy. I have to really do my own research before I see which one I want to donate to and I am going to be using coin center to validate the correct ones and for anyone who's wondering uh, coin center is one of our biggest advocates for crypto in uh, policy making and Washington specifically uh, and I donate to them yearly just because I love the work they're doing I highly support them and they also did give some pretty solid info on the Ukraine if you want to donate to the people who have been cut off from financial services over there right now so um, I guess let's just go ahead and do that right now uh, I don't have a whole lot more to go into other than actually using free wallet so let me just pull that up for all of you really quick and then we'll we'll move on to more Pepe's um, let's see you know that's really strange too Patreon suspended the account of Come Back Alive uh, which was a campaign to fund the Ukraine's defense forces uh, they actually ended it so uh, kind of strange I'm sure Patreon was trying to do their own research too and I wasn't sure I didn't want to just donate blindly uh, I didn't want to get wrapped up in sanctions violations or anything like that but Jerry Brito from uh, Coin Center did do a pretty good thread right here I'm gonna share with all of you that if you're interested you can uh, donate to a validated and correct link there Jerry does a really good job of vetting things he had a pretty good breakdown of what you can and oh, wait hold on is this the right one yeah that is the right one just go to jerry's website that he has in that url and uh he'll give you a breakdown of everything that is valid um i think it's just the two addresses right now though bitcoin and ethereum it is yeah and that was from the ukraine's actual twitter profile so that has been validated Yep, Bitcoin and ETH address. The ETH address will take USDT and Bitcoin both. So if you want to support that, go ahead. So. Hey, Mike, thank you so much for the Prime sub. I really appreciate the two months. 
You're happy to be a part of the community. I'm happy for you to be a part of the community. Thank you. Thank you. Shadow, thank you so much. We have a hype train incoming. Holy, holy moly. Holy moly. I haven't seen one of those in a little while. Oh, Bob X Marley. Yes. Okay. Hype train level one has started. 94% subs gifts or bits will get us to the next level if you want to do that um ukraine is what we're doing this for if you want to keep it going to over oh, at 100 percent, boom there it is boom all right cool hype train it is um excellent excellent um yeah if anyone else wants to donate now uh if you want to bump up the hype train please do um uh, it is going to go to ukraine uh to those addresses that i just shared um, directly and you will see the DAP digest wallet uh, donating or maybe the stream tide wallet it's gonna be one of the two stream tide or DAP digest whichever one is convenient for me um, but whatever is donated today as well as some of my own on top of whatever all of you donate will be going and you will see the transaction as soon as I get around to it <laughs> I think uh, Today is mostly going to be focused on stream. Later tonight, you will probably see it, though. I got to see. Actually, technically, I'm supposed to wait until donations on stream are cleared. There it is. A Green, thank you so much for the bits. The Ukraine thanks you. Really appreciate it. Really appreciate it. Um... Hopefully Twitch is okay with this. If Patreon is shutting stuff down, I hope Twitch is okay with us doing this. If Twitch ever shuts me down, though, I think it's going to get really fun because then we all get to, do, to export our Twitch channel points as Tide tokens and leave. Don't be a jerk, Twitch. Don't be a jerk. Three minutes. We have three minutes to keep the hype train going. We're at 40%. Can we do it? 200 bits. Oh, we're at 51%. 51%. There it is. Can we go any further? This is good. This would be a good little donation. You know what we need? Imagine if we had Stream Tide with a Ukraine donation account and we did like grant matching for everything you're doing right now. Like Twitch needs quadratic funding. Holy mackerel, Coma Dave. Thank you so much for your tier one sub. You have gifted a total of seven subs to the channel. Thank you. Jack, you got one. Awesome. Okay, this is a heck of a, a hype train. You're going to be literally helping people eat this week. So let's do it. Let's do it. I'm going to tack on some of my own money on top of this too. So um, none of you should feel obligated to do this, but just know that's what we're doing with it. That's awesome. Yeah, say say thanks, Jack. You're getting extra points now. You're you're subbed now. You have your little dank badge now. Um, kind of low energy today. I don't know if I should have done the Pepe tutorial today or not. <laughs> but uh, I'm kind of like I'm a bit grumpy, and you all are making me feel better. So thank you. You know, I will say this. Um, I want to. I have. Uh, I have some friends that have developers and and people who are working in the Ukraine right now. And because Russia put sanctions on Ukraine while they're attacking them, uh, Americans weren't allowed to pay Ukrainian citizens, even though it was from America to the Ukraine. Uh, so they ended up having to switch over their payments to cryptocurrencies so they could continue to pay their developers, even though there's no sanctions violations from an American to a Ukraine citizen. Russia put sanctions on them, shut their bank accounts down, and it's a messy situation. So uh, I have a feeling a lot of people are going to very suddenly realize uh, that their cozy little opinions about how useless crypto was uh, is suddenly a lot more useful this week. Because I'm not going to rant. I'm not going to rant. I'm going to move on to Pepe's. I just want to say thank you all. We're at a level three hype train. We're feeding people right now. We are. A Green, thank you for the gifted sub to Lee. 
Lee appreciates it. And you know what? Let's do this. I'm going to max out my dank drops too. As a thank you to all of you. Boom. Dank drops all around. I'm going to max it out. The limit to me to one, two, I think three per stream. Well, I limit me. Yeah, I get three a stream. All of you get three a stream. I get three a stream. I have the same limitations you do. You know some Russian friends who can't eat. It's a two-way street for citizens of these countries. Yeah, Coma Dave, that's the thing that really pisses me off. How many of those kids in Russia going to war understand the political situation entirely? They don't have control of their fate. They don't have control of what they're doing. They don't have control they control where they were born and they're being like just some old man who's like, I want power and control. Sounds familiar. Like, so sending kids off to war so you can have power and control? No, it, it pisses me off every time I see it. And there's a lot of people who've been talking trash about crypto and, and saying, oh, it's not useful because they're all cozy and happy in their little life. And they're like, oh, I don't see the use case for cryptocurrency. And it's like, yeah, because you're extremely privileged in your position where you don't fully understand why someone in the world might need censorship resistant anything much less censorship resistant information storage, document storage. I saw a project at ETH Denver where they were actually storing people's documentation during war times as a project. This was the actual hack because sometimes it's illegal to say who you actually are and have any paperwork because it might be a danger to your like ability to survive, eat or, you know, be a human just because you have paperwork on you and it's the wrong paperwork and you're on the wrong side of the stick. So no, it's a two-way street and just because old men wanna send children to war and watch them die, it, no, like it's sick. It is a two-way street, you are absolutely correct and just because one person wants to be, go to war doesn't mean that that's the individual citizens wants. I'm in America, I fucking hate what 90% of the decisions that my politicians make. I'm politically homeless. Most people, if you aren't politically homeless today, well, you're probably not, freaking paying attention and for your country to go to war to another with another country and everyone says it's all that country those people all believe that thing no clearly you've never lived in a democracy where you don't agree with 90 percent of the crap that's going on because of the tyranny of the majority most of the time it's not even the tyranny of the majority because people tr try to pretend like we have a democratic process okay <laughs> calming down Ooh, so. I'm sorry. I've been a little upset this week. And I'm trying really hard to stay with my mission of the stream and just being informative and not slinging my opinion too much. I like to playfully sling my opinion, but I'm going to calm down. Recreational herbs. Yes, that's probably, probably a good idea. Um, I'm sorry, I'm gonna I'm gonna kinda pull back on the throttle a little bit. I've been a little just sad this week. It's 2022, I feel like this shouldn't be happening right now, you know? Hype train success. Oh my god. Pow. That's it. Thank you so much everybody for a level two hype train. That's freaking awesome. We got six subs, 575 75 bits. Uh, I'm totally gonna match that, if not more. Um, emotes, you all got some new emotes for doing that too. So play with your emotes. You got some cute dogs in. Is that sloths? What is that? We get some sloths and a pizza eating hippopotamus. <laughs> all right. Twitch, I wish Twitch would do something just a little bit more than emojis. I mean, it's fun. I guess they can't get too political. That's our job, right? Pay the toll. You missed me at ETH Denver? Oh, man. Really? I didn't get to see anyone. I, I barely got to hang out with the people I was there with. It was just like... There's 15,000 freaking people. It was crazy. I hope you enjoyed the event, though. I hope you enjoyed it. I had a lot of fun. I heard a good chunk of people got sick, though. Um... Sorry for anyone that got sick. That sucks. 
I'm telling you, take those cold showers. Keep that immune system up. You were at the Shapeshift booth? Oh, I should have stopped by. We almost got stuck up on the mountain. Oh no. You stayed healthy? Good, good, good. I'm glad. Eating healthy. Staying fit and strong. Sometimes that's not enough. <laughs> Coma Dave, thank you for the comment earlier, though. You kind of set me off on a tangent. I've been trying to not rant. You kind of elicited a rant out of me, and uh, I actually appreciate it. I think it's important for us to express ourselves and uh, be okay with being mad. Being mad is actually a good thing. Being mad is, uh, it's important. It's a signal and it's a tool if used properly. Does shapeshift require KYC? Uh, no, they're dowifying things, Benjamin. They're, uh, they're moving in, the, in a new direction. <laughs> hey the told did you say what did i think about the event it felt like they weren't ready for 5x the previous event no they didn't they they did a good job of handling it but i don't think anyone was ready for that i wasn't ready i was not ready shapeshift was my f favorite company for the longest time and now i think they're going to be one of my favorite DAOs. <laughs> uh they started the whole non-custodial exchange uh, concept as a general thing well bitcoin and pepe's did but <laughs> i mean in the format of uniswap uh it really uniswap probably wouldn't be uniswap without shapeshift uh it's pretty cool coma you said um check out artifice nfts okay they do some old school fantasy sci-fi art cool I can dig that. Pay the toll, you went full-time with the DAO in November. It's been life-changing. Congratulations. Welcome to full-time crypto. That's a good feeling, right? Going from part-time or just dabbling to full-time is a... Uh, it's a one-way trip, I will say that. But it is very... It's rabbit holy. It's very rabbit holy. Anyway... Okay, so it looks like my Bitcoin cleared. I did send it at the beginning of the stream. It looks like we, we have a bit of a time. No, um, pay the toll. I, I did love the event, though. Um, I got to hang out with some of the founders and old friends and uh, just all the people I hadn't seen in a while. Um, Derek, who you see pop in chat sometimes from ComCom, who helps with a lot of crypto stuff. He was there. I got to kick back and hang out and uh, get to know him on a personal level. I've known him for years now and it was nice. It was nice. Uh, got to see our team members at District Zero X for the first time, two of them anyway. And yeah, I had a, I had a really good time. And uh, yeah, if you didn't catch the recap of ETH Denver, pay the toll. Let me know if what you thought of it if you watch it on the last previous stream. I did a pretty good recap of everything I possibly could cover of ETH Denver like I do every year. And uh, yeah, it was it was a lot. It was a lot to cover this year. Anyway, um, for those of you who want to learn about free wallet. So free wallet is very straightforward. I didn't get to show you the setup. But when you open free wallet, it's going to ask you if you want to create a new wallet. It gives you your seed phrase. Of course, write that seed phrase down. Don't copy and paste it and put it anywhere. Once you have that done, then you are free to actually go to your actions button here and send funds, sign messages, sign transactions, pay dividends, broadcast messages, burn funds, create a dispenser, which dispensers are what I was showing you earlier, where you're able to have someone send Bitcoin into your wallet and it automatically spits out the, the token that you put in your dispenser. You can do that all from right here. And you can cancel orders. You can create a token of your own, which is how you create your own rare Pepe. You can change the description. 
You can issue the supply of the token, destroy the supply of the token, transfer ownership, and lock the token supply entirely, which is required to make a fake rare. If you guys are getting into the fake rare community, they will ask you to lock the token supply. If you're making a token, I recommend you doing that just so people have certainty about the supply of the token you're creating. Um, if you wanna dig into making your own fake rares, I, re I really do encourage you to. Um, let me pull it up here so you can see. So if you go to the fake rare directory, they will show you how to do it right here. So let's go um, enter Ghostface Killa's world of fake rares. Ghostface Killa, FYI, did do their fake rares too. So you can go check those, those out. I believe it was series three. They had a bunch of them that I really liked. No, it wasn't three. I forget which one were my favorites. I have to go back and look. Anyway, um, you can actually go to the fake submission rules here and take a look at it. They must be a 400 by 560 and look like trading cards, of course. I mean, they, they can look like a trading card if you want. They, they just have to be the correct size. Kind of like Meme Factory, similar format. Uh, cards can be animated, but keep them three megabytes or less in size and the issuance must be locked. So you do need to use that lock feature I just showed you and lock them completely down. Your fake must not be divisible. It can't be like a Bitcoin token. It has to be just a one of one. Uh, make sure your artwork doesn't suck. <laughs> no, not safe for work content. They don't like some of the gross Pepe's. They want good artistic stuff, satirical stuff, stuff that's actually gonna be, you know, a good dank rare. Uh, Skrilla, for those of you who don't know, Skrilla is one of the first uh, crypto musicians to really dig into the crypto scene. Uh, they're really leading the charge on some of this stuff, but I believe they've had a bit of a shakeup in the team. So you'll want to reach out to Skrilla and some of the other people in the Telegram group to really ask. But I'm pretty sure Skrilla's staying on board. They, they, this dude's an OG. He's been around forever. He's a really cool dude. Uh, I believe he still has his podcast going too and uh, issued some of the first uh, music NFTs in crypto at all. And it was alongside rare pepes and everything actually that was one of the only and first nfts i ever bought was from skrilla and uh yeah you can pop in their telegram and talk directly to skrilla if you're ever unsure about something but when making your token you must have at least 21 issuance and no more than 10,000. Uh, obviously if you go on the more rare end of the spectrum uh it's probably a good thing because you know they're rare Pepe's, you want them to be rare. If you're doing it more like a PFP project and going to the 10,000 range, um, good luck, that sounds like a nightmare to manage, something like that. <laughs> no websites, no QR codes on the card. You can't have it spammy, shilly, nonsense. It has to be a dank, fake, rare. Only one submission per artist until approved or denied. After approval or denial, you may submit again. If denied, you will be contacted via, via email. And uh, please allow 24 to 48 hours before bothering our staff about your submission. No sharing and no sales prior to being published on the directory. Otherwise, your card will automatically be disqualified. So you do need to mint these prior. So what does that look like? Um, you know, you do need to look at um, actually paying for the free wallet features uh, just to open up the exchanges and everything if you want, but you don't have to, but the markets all open up and they're a lot more useful and you can easily buy XCP if you want. Um, and it's just a lot more convenient. So you can go to, where is it? XCP, XCP. Yep, and you can buy some XCP. You will need XCP just for minting your fake rares. You can go ahead and go to the market. You can do it. Actually, it looks like it works without supporting them. I don't know. Try it without supporting them, see what it does. If you wanna support developers, do it. I'm a big fan. Um, yeah, but you can, it just works like the old DEXs that we're all used to like on BTCE and, did I just say BTCE? <laughs> yeah, boomer alert. Um, yeah, go ahead and pop in here, grab a sell order. It should auto fill. You can click buy and you're off to the races. Poop, just like that. Click 
I understand I need to keep free wallet open in order for auto Bitcoin pay to work. Click yes. You can add a uh, password to your wallet, which will ask you to input that for any transactions to go through. I encourage you to do that just for your own personal security. I don't have it set up on here because I did this just for this tutorial. You can click on view your transaction. It will take you to X chain. You can look at it. It works. Think of it just like using Etherscan, but for Bitcoin. It's not bad. There's times when I actually like this better than using Ethereum because Ethereum gets clogged up. This is a lot more useful and oftentimes even cheaper on the transaction fees. So boom, you do that. Once the transaction clears, you will see your XCP in here. Then you're good to go to go to the actions, create a token, and you're gonna go ahead and fill in the, your token name. I'm gonna do like, I don't know, chicken Pepe. And there we go, that's the token name. You're gonna say the quantity. We're gonna go ahead and go with, I don't know, 21 total. We're gonna to say, no, it's not divisible because fake rares, you cannot have a divisible token. On the description, you are actually going to want to point the token description to CoinDaddy temporarily. Don't do it permanently, because then you're gonna to go to CoinDaddy and you're going to pay for an extra service through CoinDaddy, which allows you to upload the image for your fake rare, add a better description, link to a YouTube video, uh, add your own personal profile information, and you do need to do that extra service just to make your fake rare uh, fully, like when you're, cruising around uh, X-Chain and you're looking at fake rares and it has a full description and you, you can see every, every little detail. So let me show you an example. Let's look at, uh, um, wait, where's the fake rares? Oh, there's too many, too many pages. I think, where'd it go? Ha, I lost the fake, there we are. Oh, I was on it. So when you go to one, you're gonna see that they have the full details here and the image. And some of them will even say that it's part of the fake rares project once they're added. A lot of this needs to, you need to pay for the advanced service to be able to add that in here and link all the websites and everything. And that is in CoinDaddy, let me show you. CoinDaddy. Oh, hold on, coin daddy. Oh my God, sorry, I can't type today. <laughs> coin daddy, there we go. So if you go to coin daddy, um, you'll want to log in and actually create an account. And once you do that, it is a paid service to add a, uh, more information to your assets, the asset enhancement service that they do here. And it basically just gives you a different link for your counterparty asset to have a lot more information. Uh, a lot of the fake rares, some of my favorite ones that were done uh, in collaboration with like Skrilla and, and some of these guys, they, uh, they have really set a standard for what it should look like. Some of it's stored in Rweave, IPFS, YouTube and other platforms to where there's this very thick archive of information. There's been counterparty assets that just kind of evaporated because they just linked a YouTube video. Use something like IPFS and Rweave. Use the power of Ethereum to make your dank rares, sorry, your fake rares actually permanent, you know? Give people who are buying that asset the security of doing that. That said, this isn't a permanent uh, thing like well, it's not like a set it and forget it type thing when you go do the asset enhancement you can come back in log into your account and update all this information uh, considering it is like a profile you have to log into to give all your your pepe's information in here i highly recommend you set up two-factor authentication on coin daddy immediately go ahead and lock it down don't use i would even use a fresh email address with fresh two-factor really lock this thing down and don't let it anyone get in here because if they did they would be able to change your rare pepe's information on the fly just by popping into your account and, and screwing with it so it's a really important thing to secure and it also shows you that rare pepes aren't like you can't put it on our weave which is probably the most immutable option for an nft um but you can use that as a backup and you can list that in in everything so uh let me 
Let me find a good example so I can actually show you what I'm talking about here. Uh, I think Series 0 didn't have it. I think it was Series 2. Um, let me look. Hold on. That was not it. That's a good one. <laughs> Did you guys know there are NFTs on Bitcoin now? <laughs> no, I didn't. I didn't know that. There's actually a layer two solution. Um, what was the layer two solution called? I think it's like... Uh, what is it? Zero X flow? Is that what it is? Yeah, I think it's zero X flow. It's like uses lightning network to be able to do NFTs. Oh, you said STX NFT, very cool projects, stacks. I'll check that out. Yeah, I'll check that out. Thank you, Benjamin. I wasn't actually familiar with that one. I appreciate, appreciate you sharing that. STX NFT. Huh. Interesting. I see uh, Ethereum ones. Oh no, it's not. Cool, I bookmarked it though. I'm gonna go check that out. Mackie! How are you, Mackie? Mackie, you didn't claim your Tide tokens for being a guest on stream. You are, uh, you have one of the larger token locations for being a guest on stream. We pop in and, uh, and chat and uh, collect them. I have some things I wanna to talk to you about the Tide token. I'm finally done with my move, by the way, so. If I've been a little MIA talking to you, I do apologize. <laughs> I was uh, a little distracted, but I'm in the new studio. Um, the move is done. We're good to go. I'm chilling. Uh, yeah, you need to go claim them, uh, but um, you have to use the store. So your stream points, you probably have points that are exchangeable for Tide tokens and you being a guest on stream. I sent you the link on Twitter uh, in your DMs. Um, check it and you can go ahead and check it out. Yeah. I believe guests got 6,000 Tide each. Yeah. No worries. Good to see you, Mackie. I hope you're doing well. It's really good to see you. Anyway, we're giving everyone a deep dive into Pepe's right now. So, um... I'm getting a little sidetracked here. This probably was not the best day to be doing a, a deep dive in Pepe's, but you know what? I needed, I had a request to do a deep dive in Pepe's and I was like, you know, I need a decent distraction to this week to stick with my mission of being informative. I don't know why I haven't done a Pepe stream yet. It's kind of weird. It's actually really weird. Anyway, once you are totally squared away, uh, you're actually, to get back to where I was, I do apologize. I, a little sidetracked. You're dealing with a guy with ADD here. <laughs> Did I tell you? Um, you're going to change the description to the new Coin Daddy link. They're going to give you the proper one for your specific token, and it will update all this information with everything that you want. So, what is that going to look like? Let's see here. Where are the fake rares? I keep losing them. Uh, fake rares. Here we go. Um, is it the Banksy one that had it? It's not. Which series was that? Cosmo, are you watching right now? Which series had the um, the really nice ones from Skrilla where you had all the information like added into it and it looked all slick? Do you remember? Ben, is anyone watching? ADD fam represent? No kidding. I don't think it was series three. Guess it was series four? Yeah, it was series four. So if you go to series four, <laughs> you got the Wu-Tang <laughs> thing going on here. Okay. So, yeah, here we go. So fake Tony, uh, you can actually see that they added the actual music. You know you'll enjoy the of uh -huh. Sound familiar? Yeah. 
Sound familiar? Oh, bringing back memories, bringing back memories. Never gonna stop. Okay, so. That's pretty cool. The music NFTs kind of screw up the flow of it being an NFT a little bit, uh, but. but Ghostface Killers on here on this track. It was pretty cool. I, I I dug it. But if you look, like, they've really led the charge here. They have the actual image link on our weave, so it is a permanent link to our weave. They have the video on our weave. They have the rights on our weave. The audio on our weave. Audio credits on our weave. Audio master on our weave. So does everyone see why I am telling everyone like? Our weave is so important. It is a permanent record of history. We have all the Ukraine documents starting to put, be put on our weave. Our weave is a pretty cool project and I'm super stoked about it. And if this doesn't really show you like the, the standard you should be rolling with when you're making a fake rare, definitely come look at this one. I'm gonna list fake, I'm gonna link fake Tony and let you all check it out because that is what your, that's what your rare Pepe should look like these days. This is this this is a standard. Uh, I wouldn't recommend going the video route. Um, I know some people have a lot of mixed feelings about the video stuff, and they feel like people should because it, it, it doesn't unfurl on social media properly. It's like it's a little funky. It doesn't work right. Um, it it kind of sucks. Uh, you can't share it properly. But uh, other than that, it's pretty cool. I like the way they did it. Thank you so much for the follow there. I snag for my stats. Appreciate the follow. Uh, welcome to the community. Yeah, Series 4 was all music. Yeah, yeah. Um, Cosmo, do you kind of agree that it kind of screws up the flow of being an NFT, being able to share on social media with videos? I uh, I was looking at it and it does, it's a little funky, but um, I don't know. I think the whole, the next series shouldn't really go this way, but the R-Weave stuff needs to stay. This makes it permanent. It's awesome. Anyway, um, just to let you know, if you want to do this, this is the uh, paid service. It's a one-time fee for each NFT that you create. Yes, I'm calling them NFTs. Piss off. <laughs> um, you do need to pay for this on CoinDaddy. And once you link your CoinDaddy, they're going to give you a special URL. That's what you're going to plug in here. Um, and that's... You, it auto fills it right here, but once you go update this, uh, it should add all your information into your, your fake rare. And that's it. You create your token. You can see the fee is actually pretty low right now. Bitcoin fees aren't too bad. It's not bad at all. So I'm going to hit cancel. I'm not going to actually create it because if I'm going to do a fake rare, I'm going to do it properly, probably with some of the artists in our community. Um, if you're interested in fake rares, I'm kind of interested in doing some. I think we should start a a meme factory collective of fake rare artists. That actually sounds like a really freaking good idea. Is it just me? Does that sound like a stupid idea? I think it sounds like a wonderful idea. I don't know. Now that I doxed this wallet, maybe I should just do that and we'll just use this wallet for communal funds. <laughs> Cosmo, you like that series? I do too. I, I freaking love it. I love the music. I absolutely love it. That's actually the only series of the new fake rares that I own right now. Of course, the musician in the room. Ah. But I thought it was pretty cool. Um, there's not much more to show you about Free Wallet other than um, the exchange. I showed you that. We bought some XCP. You can see it show up in the balance soon. It might be done by now. I guess not. Uh, well, when the XCP arrives, you do need XCP to be able to make a, a, a fake rare. So keep that in mind. But other than that, it's pretty straightforward. I mean, you can even buy them through here. There's some limitations on the search and, and stuff unless you pay for their um, their free wallet token. Um, I do it because I love supporting developers. I'm totally down. But yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, Cosmo, did I forget anything, sir? Peter asked me to do some more Pepe focused stuff and like I don't feel like I was as prepared as I wanted to be. I'm very distracted this week. I'm like I'm still upset, but we're going to donate some we got this hype train going on for Ukraine. I'm actually stoked. We're going to go ahead and donate. We're going to donate 
but no kidding like we were just told that there's people starving all over the world like dictators seizing control sorry i'm gonna rant again i'm gonna stop we're just gonna donate money and take action and not talk take action don't talk take action don't talk brady come on yeah cosmo um I had so much more that I wanted to do that I just, um, I wasn't sure where to start today. I, this is probably a bad week to try to do educational content just for me personally. Uh, but that said, I showed everyone the directories. I showed you all counterparty and how to use it in free wallet. I am being a little biased on saying to use free wallet. It is the most user-friendly and stable option though. I will say that I've used all of them uh, the Pepe wallet is a pretty good option too. It's probably less secure. Free wallet allowed me to actually set up proper cold storage for my Pepe's. So that is one really cool thing. Um, I, so I, I definitely lean on free wallet on a personal level. If anyone has any alternate opinions about anything I showed today, please let me know because Pepe is a pretty deep dive. Like you are gonna be in the OG of the OG deep dive rabbit hole stuff if you're digging into Pepe. And please, any information on here today is not financial advice. You will get wrecked if you are new to Pepe and you just try to dive in and like ape into stuff. Pepe is not for aping in, it is a research project for a long weekend where you have a lot of time to yourself and you're ha you're, you're welcome to come ask me questions i i've, I've been in this for years i have been digging into it i i understand counterparty very very well uh i understood it long before i ever understood ethereum so please reach out in, in the community and discord if you want to get into this i'm happy to help you but yeah, we do have, um, there's marketplaces, there's all the directories. I showed you this wallet specifically, but there's the actual Rare Pepe wallet, the actual counterparty wallet, which is very unstable. Just don't even bother using it. Uh, the fake Rare wallet itself, free wallet, which is what we're showing today. Book of Orbs. Uh, Casa Toucan, um, I don't think it's supported anymore. Casa Toucan, I think the Spells of Genesis team had to kind of take a break from it i don't think they're actively developing it and it's it's kind of messy it's a mobile wallet only um it's a bit messy and zero x flow and the one that benjamin just shared with us as well those are all options for wallets uh but there's tons of other information um if you want some telegram groups to join for fake rares if you're interested in making some new fake rares i'm gonna go ahead and link you the fake rares telegram i have some other resources that i could add as well but um, yeah, I think uh, this is your best bet if you're wanting to get involved with some of the the more active rare Pepe community. They have fake rares is where it is, the official fake rares telegram. So that's your best bet if you want to dig in. Let me know if you're going to dig in. Let me know what you think. If anyone trolls you, make memes out of them and don't cry. And uh, welcome to Pepe. <laughs> First time chat. I snag for my stats. Hey, could you take a look at this collection? It seems like they just started today and I think the art is super cool and the roadmap seems to be very interesting too. Um, I snag for my uh, stats. Um, you can't share links, especially as a first time chatter, but you are welcome to join our Discord and you can hit me up in the project share channel. If there's anything you're unsure of, put it in the project share channel and tell everyone you're unsure about this and you would love someone's opinion. Uh, we love giving opinions of new collections and NFTs and, and projects. It's like, that's what we're here for is to make sure everyone has a safe and comfortable entry into uh, crypto. So please share it there. But I will ask you one thing. If it's a project you are not sure of and you're asking for other people's opinion, make it very clear that you're not like vetting it personally and you're sharing it to get someone else's opinion and vetting. Uh, and I'd be happy to give my opinion and take a look at it. And all good for the link. It's just the bot blocks them automatically. You just can't post them. Only if you're a mod. And hey, Mackie, thanks for stopping by. If you want your tokens, uh, check your message. Um, I think the link might be expired. Um, let me know. I'm just using Roll Wallet right now to give everyone their tokens. Um, 
I have some interesting plans for the Tide token moving forward. Uh, I would love to schedule a call with you and let you know what I'm working on. I would love to see what you're working on these days. I know you're changing things up too, so uh, I'd love to hear where you're at. Uh, all right, everybody, I think I covered most of the bas basics on Rare Pepe. Do any of you have questions before we call this a stream, <laughs> call it a day? Any questions at all? I love you. I love you too. <laughs> Crushed it. Yes, please. Project Share Channel. Oh, I guess I left the fake rares channel. <laughs> I just rejoined. Oh, I know why I left. Because <laughs> it, it gets pretty active. And I was trying to focus the other day and I ended up leaving. Okay, well, I just rejoined. Yeah, uh, Snag, go ahead and put that in the Project Share channel, though, and I will give you my best opinion. Um, if it's some new random PFP project, I'm probably going to tell you it's crap right away without looking at it. But <laughs> if you can tell me why you like it, and convince me otherwise, I might dig in a little deeper and see why you think it's a better project than my initial knee-jerk reaction. Um, but, I don't know. That's me just being overly careful and cautious. But you're welcome to share it. I'll give you my opinion. I'll actually look at it, though. Yeah, if you share it. Um, yeah, everybody. Thank you so much for the hype train on the donations today. Uh, I'll have to wrap it up, see what we have. Um, obviously, Twitch isn't going to pay me out this week, um, so I will have to wait, but I'll just use my own money, and you guys can just pay me back, <laughs> and I'll just match whatever you donated today, and uh, uh, yeah, I'm going to match it. Whatever you donated, I'll, I'll tack on the same amount. Thank you all so much, though. Um, I really appreciate it. I've got... Um, I've got a lot more to talk about Pepe's, but I, I feel like today just I couldn't do a deep dive. Maybe I'll con do a continuation of this if you all enjoyed looking at some of the deeper history of NFTs and crypto. Uh, we'll, we'll dig in next time and do maybe a full-blown minting session once I have actual XCP and, and we can get some counterparty tokens minted and set up. Excuse me, set up. Uh, but yeah. Uh, that is it for me today. This has been another episode of the DAP Digest. Thank you all so much for your donations to the Ukraine. If any of you don't want to donate and you want to keep splitting this to Gitcoin grants, please let me know. We will allocate it accordingly for both. I think there's actually some UK Ukraine projects on Gitcoin grants. So if you want, you may want to actually poke around over there because you might get uh, grant matching for any Ukraine-focused projects instead of just a direct donation. It might be worth... The effort i haven't had a chance to look i know the ethereum community is amazing about doing stuff like that uh in a times of need and supporting people uh go check it out let me know if you see that there is a better option for donating on gitcoin right now or in the near future stream tide i can't wait till we can get that off um yeah let me know I'm, i'd be happy to split the difference and not donate directly so Cheers, everybody. This has been another episode of the DAP Digest. I'm your host, Brady McKenna, and I will see you next time. Cheers, everybody. Brady out.